So people have been asking me for a fish room update and I thought I would do that today. I'm just refilling this nano tank. It has just had its little clean and I've done the water changes on my main system and that's when I tend to sort this nano tank out as well. Obviously I've left a little spot of dirty glass here because my dove snails are breeding in here and I don't really want to get rid of the eggs. I want the eggs to hatch and I'll have little dove snails in this tank. This tank is doing better since I changed the light. If you see my video on this Aquion light, I think it's Aquion anyway, um, things are starting to grow a lot happier in here. We've still got a little bit of bleaching on the blue octodes, but overall it's all a lot happier. This tank smells just like the ocean. When you go into a rock pool or I don't know if you've ever, ever sniffed a rock pool, and it smells just like that. So that tells me it's very very healthy in here and I'm very excited to see how this tank changes over the next six months with this new light on. You can see that this Calerpa taxifolia has absolutely exploded in growth since I've done that. Uh, it's very happy, very very happy indeed. All that's in here in terms of filtration is this bit of live rock and there's another bit of live rock there and I've got this surface skimmer on here which actually reminds me, I need to change the sponge in that. But all that's in there is some fine floss. You can see, just um, takes out whatever manky stuff goes over the top. And that's all I use in that tank. Excuse the mess in here. I wasn't really planning on doing the video yet, but I just thought I'd jump straight into it while I'm in the middle of doing this tank. So you can see the carnage that is my fish room as it normally is. Right, let's get some floss out. There we go. That's all we really need. And I do this only once or twice a month. Just stick that in there and that's perfect. So I really love these surface skimmers. They are by a company called All Pond Solutions. I think it's a British company. I don't know if you better get them in America. But one problem I was having with this nano tank is just surface scum, you get the oils and things, but since I've had this on there, it's always perfect. So that's the reason I always put them in my tanks if I can fit them in there somewhere. And that's all that's providing flow as well. It's literally just that surface skimmer blowing the water around. Just give the glass a little bit of a wipe down as well. It does get quite dusty in here. And there is, well there was, I think it's moved out now, there was a spider there and he was constantly pooing on this glass. I mean, it's not great, is it? But it will do for the moment. And it's refilling itself. You'll notice that. I have done a video on my little auto top up, the ATO. You can see that in my um, backlog of videos. You can see the sensor at the back there. And that's how I do my water changes on this nano tank. And I'll tell you what, it's been working amazingly. I just drain it down, down the plug hole, and then I turn the sensor back on, and you can see the pump somewhere down there in that following this tube and it just tops itself back up it's the easiest thing in the world to water change moving away from that tank you can see this this is supposed to be my sump right it's supposed to be my sump for this side of my fish house this whole system and when i started this it was literally just a box with water in it and some live rock for biological filtration but it has evolved as you can see we've got a rather friendly fox face who resides in there and so many mollies that I'm actually really pleased about. Um, they've recently spawned or had babies again. You can see all the mollies there. I think they come out yesterday or so. Not very old at all. They're tiny. Unfortunately, I probably lose about half, if not slightly more, that get born. Every time I get a batch, there's probably about 10 of them that come out. I feed them a couple of times a day. I do all the right things, but the attrition rate is quite high. Um, so probably out of that lot, I'll get another two or three. And you can see slowly, slowly, I'm building up my population of mollies. They're all sort of different sizes in here. You know, there's one from probably a couple of months ago. So we're getting there. It only started with two mollies in this sump. so. We are building up my population. I love having mollies in my saltwater tanks. We've also got some Calerpa Racemosa. Um, this wasn't really planned being in there. 
it actually, I, I use this because it's got a fox face in there. It's also got a, um, a regal tang, but not as friendly as this fox face. Um, I just chuck macro algae in here, that's spare. So you can see there's a bit of um, Cheeto there, we've got some Botrocladia, hair algae. And the Calerpa race Mosa just kind of grew. It is getting eating a little bit. I do see the fox face nibble on it and stuff, but it grows faster than it can be eaten. So this is changing now from a, um, a sump. There's the regal tang. Uh, it's changing from a sump to more of a refugium, which is pretty cool. One thing I was surprised about, because there is a damsel, there is a fox face, and there is a regal tang, but I was expecting them just to go to town on these baby mollies and eat them, you know, but like a brine shrimp or a mysis, but they don't really. I've never seen any of the fish in here harassing the babies, which is a real surprise. I was kind of expecting it to be that way, but no, they don't seem to care at all. If we go on to this main system, it's very crowded, isn't it? The macroalgae has gone absolutely mental. I have changed my lighting slightly. Um, I've got LED tubes on here. There's still two normal T5 54 watt bulbs, um, but I'm gonna be changing them over to these T5 replacement LEDs because of electricity costs, of course, but also they're just a bit brighter um, and they tend, they, well, they seem to be doing a really good job. Um, they might be slightly too bright because you can see the Botrocladia slightly white on the tips So I might need to either reduce my lighting schedule down slightly or Maybe feed a bit more in terms of nutrients because they tend to do this either when the lights too bright or when their nutrients Haven't been met and the last time I water changes this this system was on the 18th. So that's of the third so I think probably I fell behind slightly on my water change schedule and they've run out of a micronutrient and that's why they've gone this colour. So in the next couple of days, hopefully, they'll go back to being a deep red, which they are, you know, further away from the light and then I'll know that it was the nutrients, not the light. Other macroalgae in here, though, has gone berserk. This stuff in particular, this is incredibly rare. I don't know anybody else who has got this in... A marine tank. This is Galaxura rugosa, I believe. That's what I've ID'd it as. Nobody's told me I'm wrong yet. It is absolutely stunning. It's really furry. I don't know if I can get a zoom in. You can sort of see it. It looks like it's covered in sort of fur, doesn't it? And those white tips are the growth tips. And since I've had it in this tank, I mean, I started it off about three years ago. Um, if you know my channel on Instagram and stuff, you'll know that I had a hermit crab shell with one or two little sprouts of it. And since then, it never really grew particularly fast. It only grew a couple of shoots every couple of months. And I thought, well, this is really difficult to grow. And I just kind of left it in the corner of my systems. And it never really died either. It was one of these ones that it was pretty much unkillable. It had periods where it was covered in hair algae. It had periods where it was like beneath stuff, getting no light or whatever but it's never died. And in the last six months, since this system has really matured and come of its own sort of health, it's going bananas, especially with this new light. All these growth tips, all these white tips, they are very recent, they're in the last month or so since I've changed the lighting over. So we've got the Cladophora prolifera here. Obviously there's a bit of um, Cheeto that's intermingled with that. So I need to actually go through that and get all the Cheeto out. I find even if I do that, there's always a little bit of Cheeto left and it always ends up tangled in amongst everything, which is a bit annoying. You can see there's a bit more over there, just in the Botrocladia. And all you have to do is leave a tiny piece and it will grow back. Um, the back, we've got some Gracilaria, I think. I don't really know what it is. I call it branched Gracilaria. It's a really nice color, isn't it? It's, it's really unusual um, how it grows. It's pretty cool, actually. Let's have a look at it. I'll get a little bit out so you can actually see it properly. There's a little sprig here. So, where are we? Yeah. It's nice, isn't it? So it's like a grey colour. Under bright lighting, it's more of a red colour. So it's like a grey slash burgundy. This one is very sensitive when it comes to nutrients. Once it starts running out of what it needs, it can die back pretty quickly. And I was... I almost lost this species, actually. When I changed over to this shed, I had quite a bit, I had a lot like that. And because the system was immature, just it just died back, you know? It didn't like a new system, didn't like new tanks. 
And I had probably that much left. Like that much, pretty much. Um, just in another tank in my old shed and I thought, God, that's, that's gone then. But no, from that tiny little nugget, I've managed to cultivate it over the last six months into quite a large piece. And that's really, really quite nice because I didn't want to lose that species. Because I'm not, this is one again, I've not seen anybody else having. This, I don't know what it is. It's just one that I um, got off a snail shell. We've got some more Gracilaria here. This is what I call red ribbon. I paid a lot for this off eBay. Um, it was like 20 pounds. One guy was selling it for probably half that amount. And I've managed to grow it on now. We've got like, quite a bit, we've got that much. We've got some more over here. And I really like this as well. It's another weird and unusual shaped macro algae, isn't it? It adds a nice bit of flavor to your tank. It's kind of what you would look, when you see seaweed, this is kind of what you would imagine. And it feels very rubbery. It's a lot like kelp. Um, I don't know what it is. I just call it gracilaria because most things are gracilaria. And, um, but this one I have seen. I've seen a lot of people on Instagram it, having this in the tanks. So it can't be that uncommon. And then we have got another gracilaria up here. I think that one's courtesy. This one is growing quite well all over the place. Again, nutrient dependent. So when this starts running out of nutrients, it just won't do anything. And that's what these parts are on it, where it's got the coralline algae growing on it. That's just where it's stopped growing, you know, where the nutrients have run out, where I haven't dosed enough nitrates or phosphates or something's run out, not done a water change on time, and it just stops. But then it will have its growth spurt when it's happy. So, you know, it's quite robust, it's quite tough, but not the easiest one to grow. At the back we've got Codium. Here you can see a little um, snail on there. I love those snails. And um, yeah, Codium's growing. This one's happy because you can see the tips again are green. Most of the time when things are happy, they'll have these growth tips on them. And that shows you that they're getting their requirements. If your mackerel just doesn't do anything, and just sits there with no growth, you know you're missing something. Your, your lighting's off or your nutrients off. Um, there's, a lot in, there's a lot in here, isn't there? I didn't realize how many different species are in here. We've got Gracilaria mammillaris over there. Um, it's not really where I wanted it, but it's just spread and put itself there. And we have Halaminia maculata in here. This one's been a bit tough to cultivate. Um, Halaminias are quite seasonal, so what you'll find is it will have a good growth spurt and then it will just melt away. I think that's how they reproduce in the wild. They go to spore and then they'll create a little hold fast that like that one's got, you can see there. It's pretty cool, isn't it? But um, yeah, that's pretty nice. What else we got in there? Cryptonemia cranulata. That's this one here. It's not really meant to be in there, but it's found its way in. And then we've got the tiniest little bit of soliaria. This is literally the last bit of soliaria I've got because I just can't grow it. I don't know what I'm doing wrong with it, but it never gets any bigger than this. So something is going wrong for my soliaria. It's not one that I know how to grow. It's not dying, but it just, just that's it. It's supposed to be, I don't know, like six inches long, if you've seen Soliaria. Um, it's not really supposed to look like that, but there we go. And obviously we've got some corals and bits and bobs in here. Um, so moving on to the other side, this is more of a cultivation system. So I've actually got different tubs for individual species, as and where I can. So this is kind of what that side should look like, but I like to also have tanks that look pretty. So we got Calerpa taxifolia in here. It looks cool from above, doesn't it? I quite like macroalgae from above. Really, really healthy in there. Growing um, like stink. LEDs on the top there. We've got loads of Cryptonemia cranulata in here. This is the main tank for it. You can see handfuls of it. Um, really healthy. I love this macroalgae. It's got such a weird texture to it. You expect it to be slimy, but it's not. It's... Um, it just feels like tree leaves that are, you know, in autumn when they dry out. If it was a bit like that, crunchy. Like you, can, you, know, you can hear it, crunchy. And also, it's got little spikes on it. It's quite rough. Um, so really cool. And very different to any other macroalgae 
you can put in your tank you don't really get many things that actually have like proper leaves but it grows very weirdly so there's no well there probably is a reason that it does it but it grows off itself so you have a leaf but then you'll have like another leaf growing off that leaf and then off that leaf that has grown it will then send out more leaves so it kind of just grows off itself there's no real stem to it that's what I'm trying to say um, although it does and can create hold fast so I've got one in um, my flavor shaker tank which we'll look at in a second so here is Gracilaria mammillaris and you'll notice it's not very nice looking at the moment and that's because I missed a water change so it's done that thing I was talking about earlier where it just stops growing doesn't do anything gets um, coralline growing on it you can see you've got coralline growing on it you get detritus building up on it but that's to do with nutrients it's run out run out of something or multiple nutrients and just stop growing so hopefully a water change that I've done I've added some more nitrate and phosphate and within a couple of days this should hopefully now start growing again down here we've got some I don't know what it is it's slightly fluorescent you can see you might be familiar with this algae most in most reef systems it tends to grow around weirs it grows around anything that sort of flows your intakes and your outtakes um, I really like it I've only just worked out how to cultivate it properly um, it's very sensitive though it can die temperature wise it dies off quite easily if it gets too cold um, no nutrients again it will just melt away so quite a tricky one but I like it it looks really cool um, got some mangroves in here this tank's not really doing anything as a clownfish. I'm trying to get this red hair algae to grow. But for some reason this middle tub just doesn't do anything. There's hair algae in it. There is just it's just a bit of a waste of uh, space. Which is why I keep the mangroves in it, because they do really well. You can see they've got leaves growing. Um, you know, they're all pretty happy. And in the end here, we've got mountains and mountains of blue octodes or blue hypnia, whichever one it is everybody's most sought after macroalgae. If you're struggling to find blue octodes or blue hypnia, the reason is is because I've got it all in this tub um, and no you can't have any of it, it's all mine and um, tough. Moving over you can see if you want to look at my plants as well, my Montestera has gone mental, it lives in this pot down here and you can see it's just growing. What I want to do eventually is actually train this, there's a hole there and yes I could drill another one but I'm being lazy eventually this will get long enough to meet, reach that hole and then I will zip tie it um, over and it'll look really cool above the flugel shaker which is this tank and this tank is still hair algae and I think it's always going to be hair algae because of the lava rock that I've used in here it's I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure that it's this lava rock you don't typically use lava rock in a marine tank and some people have done it with no issues and some people do it and they get this result so I think it's very much down to where your lava rock is from whether or not you can use it I have no idea where this was from it was just out of a, a fish shop you know so I think this lava rocks releasing something that something is just feeding hair algae and my macro algae just can't out compete it am I gonna tear this tank apart just to get rid of hair algae and put like normal live rock in here I'm not I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to leave it. This is the ecosystem that this tank wants to be in. I mean, there are macroalgae in here. They're growing. There's the cryptonemia that I was telling you about. So that has actually attached itself via a holdfast to um, to that rock. So that you know, that's the natural way of it growing, not free floating. What I'm going to do is I'm going to buy loads more um, like snails and things and put it in here, and hopefully we can get that balance back over so that the hair algae. Is under control the moment it's not is it but everything's healthy look the that's kids kenya tree is just insanely healthy i've got a um an enemy up here which is pretty happy my mangroves under this light are all happy so nothing's unhealthy in this tank everything's happy so we'll just again we'll just leave it to do its best we'll keep cleaning it we'll add some more cleanup crew hopefully eventually once this macroalgae and so on has developed a bit further the macroalgae might take over and get rid of this hair algae but whatever you know I think it still looks quite nice as a tank it's quite a nice feature hair algae is part of the underwater ecosystem so it's not exactly 
wrong, is it? You know, there is hair algae in nature, so there you go. That's what that tank looks like. I think it still looks quite nice. Moving on, we've got more cultivation tanks. So we've got Calerpa racemosa, Calerpa brachypus, Calerpa taxifolia in that one. Um, the brachypus is quite cool. It does this rafting thing. So you can see it goes to the surface and then rafts, which I quite like. Uh, it's very healthy. This grows like stink. And then down here, we have my sump again. This is what feeds this tank and these three tanks along the top. And as you can see in this tank, there is no hair algae, right? Or there's a little bit of hair algae, but it's not all over the rocks. It's not all over everything, which is why I'm pretty sure that that tank has hair algae because of the live rock, because it's the same system as this tank and there's no hair algae. So, you know, you tell me what's going on there. Fish wise, I have got some beautiful fish in here. We've got a koi eye wrasse, right? That's a recent addition. Um, they're expensive, but I just had to have them because of how beautiful they are. They're a type of parrot fish, I think. Absolutely stunning. A um, couple of butterflies in it, or one butterfly. We've got a little tang, damsels, black clownfish. These are all fish, actually, that I just had spare when I used to have display tanks. I just stuck them all in the sump. Um, but I have bought the wrasse recently because I just fell in love with them at a shop beautiful aren't they I know these can get to a couple of feet long so I will need to upgrade him to a bigger tank at the moment but at the moment this system is about a thousand liters it's a four by two by two tank so plenty of space for this guy at the moment right look at him oh stunning fish so there you go for all the people that are wondering how my fish house was doing how my tanks were getting on there's the full update that's literally everything how everything is at this very moment nothing has been hidden i hope you've enjoyed it if you have leave a like also subscribe if you are not already a subscriber once again thanks for watching and happy fish keeping